Okay, we're back. I've got a scissor jack and a bike pump. Hopefully, if I inflate the tires, this will uh, make it let go of the ground a little bit. I'm hoping. Let's jack this up. Gave one, Mother Nature is zero. Actually, we'll, we'll give Mother Nature half a point. I had to struggle for this. Ah, the pipe's not over yet. We're stuck. I'll put a piece of pipe. There we go. You got the way. Whew! Alright, this is a little bit of a workout. Well, there she is, folks. <sighs> Can't really say too much about it right now. Um, Put some tape and cloth on top of the exhaust so it wouldn't rip a hole through the uh, tarp. Keep the water out. And as long as she'll start, battery's definitely dead. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't matter if anyway. So if I can call right. Oh, I've been jiggered. Sweet. I did keep the carburetor on it. I thought I had to replace that. Alrighty. Well, uh, let's push this thing in the garage, shall we? All right, wasn't so bad pushing her in. Been uh, quite a while since you've last seen this on video, and I've never done a proper full walk around and or uh, spec video of this machine, otherwise known as the Red Murray Monster, from the second year of Andover racing, back when Corey was piloting her. Uh, a couple of light modifications after the race. One was we cut out the grill so that way it can actually breathe. I had to put some chicken wire in the front just so that way it doesn't get any rocks or bigger objects flying in through there. Um, carburetor, uh, engine, all stock. Uh, the only thing that's been modified is it's just a single straight pipe exhaust. Um, like I said, battery's dead. 
We've got the throttle. Whoop. <laughs> I'll put some uh, some WD or something in there. Usually that return spring must be getting a little rusty. Uh, anyway, throttle. Clutch. And brake. And if you look at the back of it, it is slightly offset. Uh, that is because that is not the original transmission. The original transaxle that came from this was a beast of a thing. It must have weighed upwards of 110 pounds. It had six forward high, six forward low, and at least two different types of reverse. And when we picked this machine up for the drum roll, please, outrageous price of $27, including the working engine. Uh, I bargained with the guy, said, listen, we're trying to make this into a racing mower, so I'd really appreciate it if we could get our hands on a lighter transmission. Is there any way that you would want the big transmission from this mower, and if you have another transmission kicking around, we'll take that instead? And he did, and it's a three-speed, one-reverse, H-pattern shift, so, this is neutral right now. First, second, if I remember right, third, and reverse. And uh, that particular transmission, the way it mounted up, the only way at the time I could mount it, I had to move the transmission as far over as I could to this side of the frame, and the mounting bracket is right here. And that was as far over to the left as I could get it. And there's, like I said, it's not a substantial gap difference. I really don't think it affects handling. If anything, it makes it a little better because most lawnmower races are left corners. So you've got a little more stability out to the right-hand side. So right now, the major issue we've always had with this particular machine is the steering. Now, my... Blue mower, the uh, steering axle, or whatever you want to call it, goes, it's, it's not as angled as this, it's a little straighter, so it goes straight down through the bottom of the frame. This, because of the extreme angle, and we wanted to keep that, um, was held on here by a universal joint that actually, whoops, just lost the camera, that uh, came from a pickup truck, and we got rid of all the, the gears and guts that used to be right here. There used to be a big half gear right here, and then there was a little gear that went down to it. And this piece right here, this is an original part that came with the uh, lawnmower. This bit did bolt into here. There was another one identical to this that was down below, but the, the line didn't go this way. It went that way. It was three pieces of leather in a circle so it bolted leather to this on either side and then bolted this leather leather so that way it did the job of this but with fabric <laughs> so needless to say when we built this thing we wanted to get rid of that because it not only gave us extreme amounts of slop in the steering but it was old it was decaying there was just absolutely no way Either one of us was going to jump on this thing with that as the means of steering. Um, so we, we took care of that. I welded her all up. That's been holding pretty solid. And we've got it so it's like go-kart steering the whole underside. I'll get back down here and show you. Um, I completely redid all the steering components. So it goes... I hope you can see that. Um, you've got a, a rod that goes from one wheel, the other wheel, up here to the middle. Uh, and then that gets connected to the steering arm, flies back right over to here, and then right above that is that universal joint. So there's really not a whole lot of play. Uh, and it's a quarter turn, left right is full lock, and it's really not that bad to steer with, but like I said, there's just, like you can see it right here, like you got all this, but 
nothing's happening with the wheels. So I'll see if I can try and figure out a way of reinforcing this centerpiece so that way this area has something nice and strong to not flex with. Okay. Sorry if that was a bit wordy for you folks. I uh, just wanted to try explaining everything that's been done to this machine thus far. I know I've skipped a couple of things, but we'll go along with those as time goes on. Uh, I got some unbolting and welding to do. So, I'll see you on the next update. Actually, you know what? Before I jump in on that, let's just see if the thing starts again. Ground. A bit smoky. Where the heck is that smoke coming from? And maybe it's the steam? I don't know. There's a little bit of ice built on it. All right. Well, hot cha-cha. I'll, I'll take that. All right. Now, fun aside, let's get on to some business. So the teardown's going pretty good. Got the engine gas tank out of the way, so I have clear working space for the steering. Took about 20, 25 minutes. Would have been a little bit faster. I only had one hiccup when trying to take the throttle cable out. When I installed it, I had it solid up here, and then I just ran it through this little hole down to the carburetor. Uh, when unassembling it, I didn't want to take the time to take the carburetor off the lawnmower so I could have access to the wires and take it out that way. So I undid it from here. When I got down to that hole, it was not big enough to fit the piece that goes in here through there. So I grabbed my grandfather's hand punch, you know, it makes, makes holes, and uh, I just popped that little divot out, and that was all it took to fit it through there. So I was really happy with that. Also, when I disassembled the pulley for the engine, it just slid right off. I, I didn't use Never Seas uh, or anything like that to keep it lubricated, but I'm so happy that rust didn't infiltrate and make that a pain in the butt to get off because that would have, well, been a pain in the butt. All right, I got some welding to do. Try and strengthen the uh, steering components on this thing. So until the uh, next update, I'll catch you later. Well, this is the last update to this particular video because it's getting dark and it's getting cold. As you can tell, I'm wearing my jacket now. The garage is in ambles, which I have to pick all this up before I leave here tonight. Oh yeah, had to dig deep into my stash to get good parts. However, progress has been made. I need to do a couple more touch-up welds here and there, but I took a piece of my one and a half inch ID pipe exhaust on my air ends and made a sleeve of this, and I had to down the middle, the full, you know, three or so inches, I cut it and then crimp it in because it's just, it was still giving a little bit too much slop. But now, that's good and freaking solid. Um, overall, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with this, and I think that's going to drastically change the way this thing steers for the better. So overall, not quite as much done as I wanted to. I would have liked to have gotten this, the steering completely fixed and possibly even the engine back on, but... You know, what's done is done, and I can't say I'm upset with it. So i got to get picking up because it's getting darker and it's getting colder. And this has got to go back outside. I'll leave the engine in here in its corner over there uh, just because I don't think it's really hurting anything doing that. I just need to I said, clear all the rest of this out of the way. <laughs> all right, I'm going to leave myself to that. This is Gabriel Hoy signing out.